One of the segments I have thoroughly enjoyed, he's, he's added to my staple of uh, regular guests every week, is Steve Davis. And w- we talk about, we've changed, haven't we, Steve? We have. We've swung around. We can swing any way you like. But at the moment, we're just looking at just those people who are behind the small businesses that we take for granted. And I think that's a great idea because they, it's, small businesses in this state uh, are doing it hard, have done it yeah. hard for a long time during COVID, um, hopefully coming out the other end, um, probably not if you're in the pub trade at the moment, um, <laughs> which, which we would like. And, and we yeah. need you to support our pubs people, don't we, Steve? I, we're doing a bit. We just pulled into Claire in an Airbnb. And we just had lunch at the Clare Hotel and we did our bit over the counter for them. What have you got for me today, Steve? Well, the fact that we pulled into an Airbnb, there are people who run B&Bs all over SA and we, we normally book them, stay, disappear, and typically all goes well. But there are people behind. And there's a lady I've got to tell you about uh, today. Her name is Annie Haynes and uh, she runs a B&B down in Road called The Shelter. And she also runs a, a farm where they run sheep. And uh, this will also invi- involve uh, flying in a small aircraft. She's as well as a female truckie. Well, that's that for a story. That's a great story, Steve. Now, she wasn't responsible for the COVID outbreak in Rome, was she? No, no. <laughs> she, she followed. Well, I tell you what, COVID would be pretty game because if you ever meet Annie, she's a matter of fact down to earth person. She would tell that COVID to get back where it came from. And take no, you know, take no prisoners. Yeah, exactly right. It's only a joke, Annie, if you're listening. It's okay. (laughs) Yes. So, look, Annie Haynes, let me tell you, I first met her actually a few years ago. So before she did that um, that three hours of mentoring thing with me and talked about marketing, I'd actually met her running a social media workshop in Coonawarra. And I remember this moment. It was towards the end of the day. She had to leave early. She just stood up. Everyone looked around. She said, Steve, I've loved it but I've got to go and play Flog. <laughs> Sorry? Said, what the? What? <laughs> she said, oh, well, golf, but I'm pretty bad at it. And so I basically flog the green. Mm-hmm. And everyone's in tears of laughter. And that was Annie. She had her blouse on, her trademark sort of blouse and her pearls. And <laughs> off she goes. And so it, it, I've known her for a long time. But here's one thing I didn't know. I was talking to her. And she grew up around Tintanara. And was a, she calls a truckette, which is a female <laughs> truck. I'm not even sure if that's the proper term. Truckette. <laughs> a truckette. And just imagine this. She's not tall. And there she would have been. She had the frilly shirt and the pearls, uh, even as a truckie, and got up to, and, and used it to get away with stuff. She said there are a couple of things she told me. Uh, this is a young girl driving trucks. She's on her way home. Um, back from Portland with a load of uh, super phosphate and she got pulled over by the heavies, she calls them, um, who, who you know, check all the trucks uh, to make sure they're not overweight. Yep. She was in Mount Gambia and they said, boy, you've got too much and you've got to drop your load down a bit, which meant moving 30 tonnes of 25 kilogram bags, which is 1,200 bags. Wow. Her reaction, as if. So she sort of nodded nicely and she said to me, around midnight, she snuck out while they were all sleeping, <laughs> hopped in her truck, <laughs> and went the slow way uh, home all through the Coorong in a pea soup fog. A five-hour drive took about seven hours, but she got there. I was just uh, going to say, Uncle Steve and Uncle Richard are not promoting <laughs> right, d- doing naughty things on your tr- about the loads you carry on your truck. Keep going, Steve. That's- well, there's another time that she got pulled over by the heavies again because her load was too high, they said. And right. this is classic. She said, well, well, let's measure them. And as a good girl, she said, she climbed up and they were all ogling and staring at a certain place while not keeping an eye on where she had the measuring tape. Right. And she dropped it down about 40 centimetres. All was measured fine and off she went. So that's part of her life. <laughs> it's, it's not all outlaws, though, I've got to tell you, not all outlaws. Um, she, with the sheep farm she's got just out of Robe, on the eastern side of Robe, uh, with her hubby David, they run sheep. Um, used to run about eighteen thousand of them. Have recently wow. dropped down to yeah, that, I know that's a that's a fair bit of sheep there. Um, but she said they're getting older, and 
hard to find people to come in and help and manage. So what they've done is they've uh, dropped down to 2,500 head, which you can make a living off. Um, and they also, now this will test your farm knowledge. They get they buy in, if, if the season's good and there's a bit of extra feed around, they'll buy in about 80 or 100 steers. Do you know what a steer is? Uh, big bull? It's a bull without certain things that bulls are known for. Yes. Okay. And they clean this up immensely for your listeners, so yes. Yes, thank you. Uh, And uh, they fatten them up for the domestic market. Um, So that's the meat that we see in our our supermarkets every now and then. But you often wonder, because with the sheep, you know, they've got to send them off to be slaughtered uh, for food. And, you know, she said, even people on the farm, they, they don't, necessarily love that part of it, but they know they're growing food, fact of life. She said when the numbers are smaller, you tend to have a closer bond. And something she said that was the hardest thing growing up on a farm was preparing a steer for the Royal Adelaide show because you're feeding it twice a day for a few weeks beforehand. You take it and it's judged and then it's taken straight to abattoir and then it's also judged on the hook afterwards for the meat quality. Oh, dear. I yeah, know that's a, that's a bit of a tough gig, but you know that's that side of it. But flying, I had no idea there are people among us with light planes. Typically, people on the land, and you know, we hop in the car, we chuff around. It's the same with them. Uh, Dave and Annie have a uh, a Cessna, and uh, they have it because when David was a youngster, about seventeen, his fa- uh, family had a property just near Broken Hill, as, as well as one down near the the uh, robe area, that's a 12-hour drive. And his dad said to him, well, you can drive it or you can fly. And so he got his license at 17. Annie started learning to fly at 55. And and not only that, um, uh, uh, they do these things. Now, this is, you and I, we go about our normal life. Overhead, if you look up, see he's part of a group, a Cessna 200 group, um, they're lovely people from all over Australia and they have fly in. So they arrange to go to a town for the weekend, whether it's Clare or wherever, and they plan it all. And they have like a dozen or so of these light planes come in. They have a weekend of frolicking and then off they fly. I went on one with them with my daughter, AJ, when they went up to Winton in uh, Queensland where the dinosaurs were discovered. Right. And that would have been great is- fun. Uh, but it's just like a car trip. Like, I don't know if you've ever been... Have you been in a Cessna? No. No. They're tiny. They're like, they're like a little sedan with wings. And so AJ and I are in the back seat, and this is how you get to Winton. You you head off from Parafield. You stop to pick up some fuel in Broken Hill. You then stop in Inaminka, and you just see how red, oh, that red centre is. And then off you go, land in Winton. And here's the thing that we don't normally get. We landed there, got to our rooms, and there's a place where the dinosaurs stampeded years ago, about a 40-minute drive. And they said, do you want to see it, AJ? She said, yeah. So we didn't drive. We just wandered back to the plane. Up we were. <laughs> Ten minutes later, this is this is the, the flying life. They're radioing. As they land, the local ranger comes out, picked us up in the ute, and took us there. It's a different life. It is, it is a different way to see the world. I was going to say, um, good here, you know. Yes. <laughs> which is which is good because it was darn hot up there. I can tell you, it was a stinker, and uh, just being able to hop in the plane and fly. But but being able to go to Inter- Inaminka was was great. It's a dusty old strip out there, uh, and again, you just got picked up. You got treated like royalty. They pick you up, they take you into the local pub, have your meal, and while they're refueling, and then off you go again. It's just. Um, these people are among us, they, and, it's, and it's practicality. It's not just for the exuberance of it. They, they do a lot of miles when you're running a, a property, uh, yeah. and it's just – they're not cheap to run, but over time it probably pays for itself. So uh, the, I should mention the Australian Women Pilots Association. I think she was the president for a little while there. Uh, and So I had um, no idea there was an Australian Women's Pilots Association. <laughs> yes, indeed. Uh, and she said the reason she likes going to those events is pilots, she said, are great people. They have their fun, but there's no idiots among them. They are straight talkers. And so, as you can imagine, you don't really want a goofy 
person. No, you need some control. level of intelligence to fly a plane. Yes. So anyway, there's just, I don't know, just a fascinating story of her life. I think of that patchwork and then the people who go and stay and then disappear from the shelter, they would have, often have no idea. No. Of the, the patchwork story that got her to where she was. Um, and also she's one of those people who's on every committee known to humankind. <laughs> so the Lucendale Country Club, the local golf club, she's the Cessna 200 um, a president uh, in Australia. You know, you need something done. You just get someone like Annie Haynes onto the case and the, and the job's done. And I was going to say that, you know, people, are, I always admire people on the land. You know, just oh. it's just they are the unsung heroes of Australia. Yep, and they take the swings and roundabouts. Like, we're having a glorious day today, and that's fine, but if it's at the wrong time of the season, that day could be horrible, and they've got to look after their animals, and, you know, just it's never-ending, and we take it for granted. We might buy our little packet of lamb or whatever it is, but they've got to raise the whole thing, and so they've got to do more than we do with making sure they're sent off and they're butchered properly, and, you know, we do skirt along fairly nicely um, when we're not on the land and we probably will rely on them and I think we take them for granted a bit too much, quite frankly. I think we do um, too. Yeah. And so, look, and, and the other thing is we were driving up through um, Blythe today, uh, Balaclava, and you see the farmers in the Utah there and you just just chill out. You just This is their land. Mm. There's a couple of idiots up there who were right up people's backsides the whole time. Um might have been a female truckie uh, in, a, in a set of pearls, I don't know. But, um, you know, there's just some idiots on the road and it's their world. This is their workplace and we've got to look up. We do. Steve, thank mm. you very much for talking to me again on 5AA. I hope we can get back next week to highlight another South Australian. How do you feel about that? Well, I've actually got someone in mind and it also in, in, includes a link to Don Dunstan that you wouldn't expect. There we go. Well, I like the intrigue from you, Steve. That is excellent. All right. <laughs> all righty. Thanks, en Richard. Thanks, enjoy, thanks. Claire. Have a wine for me. All right? I will. And we're off to Seven Hill. Shakespeare under the, uh, next to the vines tonight. So people are coming around to watch some Shakespeare. I know you can't hold yourself back, oh, Richard. Yeah. I can tell. Yeah. I can. If, if, only, if only I was there, Steve. <laughs> Sorry, I'll stream it for you on my phone. There yeah, thanks, thanks, Steve. If you okay. start without me, it's, it's okay. All right. <laughs> as, you, as you like it. Okay. Thanks, Steve. Bye. That was Steve Davis highlight, highlighting another South Australian. We will take a short break and we're going to be back with some finance tips for you.